Right, okay, then here we are again. Let's get the rest of the stuff now off of the chassis. There's not much left, so let's make a start. Right, well, looking over it, all I've actually got is the A-frame at the front and the shock absorber to come off and the leaf springs which connects up to obviously the chassis rails and a couple of uh, u-brackets that hold the actual axle onto the subframe and also the rear shocks have got to come off now i'm looking at the shocks and i can't seem to find any uh, about on ebay at the moment and also on the internet i've done a little search and, and stuff but um once i get them off i'm hoping to measure the length of them and find out the the rebound pressure or whatever and then hopefully i can um, find some sort of equivalent to go with it so let's just show you around it now quickly just to see what we've got left and then i'll put you on the time lapse camera and we'll get this thing stripped down right well as you know coming around the front there we've got one big bolt here at the top which holds the top of the shock absorber off this would bring off then the um a frame which is again is in great condition and that's these two bolts here one there and one over there and uh that then will relieve everything off of the front then so that'll be dropping down these brackets here i don't know whether or not to take these off or not or I'll probably get it sandblasted on i'm not too sure yet um they're the two brake lever and the clutch lever there so that's what i've got there coming over towards the back of the vehicle we've got one anchor point there for the uh leaf spring and also the leaf spring hanger at the back there so that's not a problem and, and also the uh, top mount there which is for the shock absorber as you can see there and that nut is very, very corroded. There's a very good chance that I might lose that. So uh, I might have to replace the shock absorbers on the strength of that. And basically, as you can see, everything else is off of the chassis rails. And it's just a matter then of obviously just stripping it down or getting it shipped off to the sandblaster and uh, refurbing the axle and stuff like that, checking the oil in the axle and stuff like that as well. Remove the wheels. Obviously, the brake plates have got to come off and be all cleaned up or whatever. I don't know whether it's got new wheel cylinders in there, they actually look pretty new to be honest with you. If you can see that there, the wheel cylinders do actually look very, very new, so there's a good chance that they, they've all been replaced. And I'm still toying with the idea of the engine. I've had one of the chaps who does Reliant Regal refurbishments send me a, or leave a couple of messages and stuff and said that he would be interested in the, this seat. I'm, I'm looking at putting the black seats in this van. Uh, as to mimic what we had in the original Trotters van. But as for the engine, I'm not too sure whether still to go with this original engine. Um, as I say, this was running fine, perfectly, but it was just smoking a lot. I understand they do smoke, but obviously to get through an MOT, uh, there might be a reason for that. It might be the valve guide seals, oil seals that have gone. If it is, it's a matter of that, I'm not too sure. But I did notice that when we went to push, take our foot off the clutch, it was very grabby and it did pull very, very sharply sort of thing. So it may need a new clutch, again, which is not a large expense, but I'm not sure whether or not I'm gonna put this engine back in yet or go for the um, the 850 engine, which I think I've got one in the uh, log cabin, which I brought with a vehicle. This is a positive earth vehicle, and I will be probably converting it to a negative earth system. And uh, I've done a bit of research on that. It's not too much of a problem to do that. And I'll show you that obviously when I come to do it, but it means fitting an alternator. You can change the polarity of the dynamo uh, the field windings or whatever uh, by uh, doing a little bit of uh, trickery with some uh, uh, touching the, the the field windings or whatever and it reverses the polarity but I may or may not go with that because I don't really want to have a dynamo because of its uh, sort of poor charging capabilities so I will be possibly be, uh, be putting an alternator on here and depending on whether I fit the same distributor which is a contact breakerless point there's nothing you need to do to reverse the polarity uh, for that. Uh, not unless you put the electronic ignition module in, which is a contactor breakerless system. You need to change the polarity of them cable. So we'll come to that when we come to do that anyway. And I'll probably be doing a detailed video on changing the polarity of a, a positive earth vehicle to a, a negative earth vehicle. Anyway, time lapse camera time now. Let's get this stripped down. See you in a minute.
Right, well, as you probably saw from the time-lapse camera there, they was a right pig to get off them bolts. I've tried heating them up, that didn't want to know. And in the end, I had to cut the bolt, uh, the nuts off. So I'm gonna to have to get new bolts for them as well. Exactly the same, which is gonna happen with somebody. We're gonna to try to undo these. I can see what, exactly what's gonna happen there. So I'm just gonna grind these off now and then we can release the whole back end now, hopefully away from the chassis. So let me cut these bolts off. undo that now again I'm looking at uh, replacing these shocks anyway so I wasn't too bothered about actually damaging the, uh, the thread so to speak so if I do you reuse these um, shocks I think the nut the uh, thread's been preserved so I would be able to just put two new nuts on here and get away with it there we go, there's one out, I'm just going to do the other one now and I'll see you again in a minute. Right, let's try these two here. Right, that's that one out. Yep, did damage that bolt but uh, that can't be helped. Let's do this one. Well, that one's tight. Right, okay. Looks like I might have to cut that one out. Right, it looks like it's stuck on the bushing that's in there where it's been heated up. It's uh, grabbing hold of it. So, back to the good old fashioned hacksaw. Oh, come on, you pig. There we go. Right, so, lift it out of the way now. Right, hopefully, we should just be able to lift it up now and move this forward. Oh, look at that. Look how light it is. Look. Go forward with that. That's it. That's what we were aiming at. As you can see now, I can now work on them to get the bolts out of them. There is some sort of rubber bushing in there. That's probably what was uh, stopping it, as you can see in there. But uh, I'll have to sort that out. I had to cut this brake hose this side because I couldn't undo the nut anyway. That's another story. So there you go. And it's lovely and light. As you can see, there's no weight to it whatsoever. So I'm just going to disconnect the front end now. And we'll see you in a minute. Right, okay, this hopefully should be it. So I need that top bolt out. That comes out nice and easy. Hang that up down there. Like that. That one out there. <laughs> I 
There we go. Ah, the wheel is separate from the chassis. Ah, yes, there we go. Well, there you go. This is all ready to be shipped off now uh, to do some sandblasting. I probably could get some little brackets off and stuff like that. We'll see that in the next video anyway. Don't forget, if you like my videos, do rate, comment and subscribe. And please, if you get an opportunity, share my videos on your other social network, things like Facebook or Instagram, because it builds up my channel and also gets more people watching my videos. And I like that. <laughs> okay then, don't forget, tune into the next video where we hopefully should see this going down to get sandblasted and the other bits getting cleaned up or whatever. So we'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now.